Hello everyone and welcome to this session on SQL DML statements. Now we have already taken a look at the SQL DDL statements which are the data definition language statements and they consisted of the create statement, the drop statement and the alter statements. The statements that we're going to take a look at today are data manipulation uh, statements and they're basically any kind of statements that are used to deal with the data that is residing within the tables in the database. So the four statements that comprise of the DML statements are the select statement which is basically used to select or take a look at all the data in the table. Then you have the insert statement which we will use to insert new records in the table. We have the update statement, which is used to update or modify any already existing record in the table. And then we have the delete statement. So the delete statement, as the name suggests, is used to delete any data records in the table. So let's start with the select statement. Now we have a table that we're going to use for our demo purpose and that is the DBO employee table. So let's use the select statement and try to see what kind of data resides in this table. So select statement, the simple syntax to use a select statement is use the keyword select. Select and you want to see all the data in all the columns of the table. So you can just write select star from and the table name so the schema name you can give and the table name so dbo dot and the table name is employee so you can just give the uh, the table name select the statement and execute it and you will be see, able to see all the data that is present in this table so you can see that there are one two three four five and six columns the first name last name email address phone gender and department name and there's some data in the table you can see over here that there are 19 records in this table because we use the star here it displayed the data for all the columns in the table so this is the complete data that exists in this table now let's say there are a lot of records in the table and therefore this view will not be able to give you a complete picture of all the records and now we are only interested we are trying to analyze some particular records so we want to see only the records where the department name let's say is production so we can see that there are different departments over here you have the values of production then you have marketing engineering and so on so now i want to see only those records where the department name is production so we can add a clause to the select statement so we just wrote select star from dbo.employee we can add a clause which is called the where clause so where this is simply a filter on the data because we only want to see some selected or preferred data so where the department name put the column name so the department name and it would suggest automatically the column name so you can just select it from here with the department name is equal to and because it's going to be a vacat column therefore we have to enclose any string value within quotes so production So if you just run this statement, you will be able to see all the data for all the employees who belong to the department by the name of production. So this is how you can use the select statement. You can also use it in different ways. So you can find out the total number of records in the table. So you can use the select count star option in that case. So select count star from employee. So you can just select this and you can see that there are 19 records in this table now what if there are multiple columns in this table so there are a lot of table uh, columns in the table and we are only interested in analyzing the data in particular columns of this table in that case you can explicitly specify the column names over here so you can write first name let's say we are only interested in finding out the first name and uh, the gender so we can just say the gender from dbo.employee okay so just select and execute this query and you'll be able to see the data only for those particular columns so this is basically how you can use the select statement now the next statement that we have is the 
insert statement so we have 19 records in the table let's say we want to we have some new data that is coming and we there is a new employee and we want to add the data for that employee into this employee table so for that purpose the statement that we are going to use is called the insert statement now uh, i i'll show you the syntax of the insert statement so if you're not sure what other option you have is you can just go and select your table name over here okay and then right click on it i'm sorry okay right click on it and you'll see all these options okay now this is sql server management studio where you will be able to see all these options uh, if you're not uh, sure of the syntax what you can do is you can just go over here which is the script table as then go to the insert to statement and select new query editor window so what this would do is basically it would generate a sample insert into statement for this table so you can see over here what it has done is insert into that is your syntax dbo.employee that is the table name then you can see that within brackets there are all the column names of this table so all the columns of this table then values and then it has suggested that this column is has this data type so you should be putting inputting a suitable value in this column now how we can use this is let's just copy this part insert into go back to our query window and paste it over here now we want to insert data a data record with values for all the columns so we have all the columns over here so insert into table name then you have these brackets over here all the columns in which you want to insert the values separated by a comma and then you close your bracket and you write the statement values and then you put all the values now it is only suggesting what kind of values we need to put in now we need to put in the actual values so column by column in the same order we have to put the values the first column over here is the first name so now we need to put a value for the first name now you can check over here that the data type and you you can see over here as well that the data type of this column is varchar so if it is varchar you have to enclose the value within quotes so let's say the first name that we want to input is vane okay then the last name so the last name that we want to input is it's also a var char so we need to enclose it within quotes and uh, let's say uh, thomas then the email address of this person so let's say vene dot thomas at adventureworks dot com uh, okay and then the phone number for this person the phone number is also varchar so we need to okay now here we need to enclose it within quotes it was a varchar and if we do not do that it would be a syntax error and we'll get an error so the phone number is also varchar so again within brackets you can put any number that you can remember 9991000 let's say enclose it within quotes the gender gender is varchar1 as we can see so She's a lady, so we can just put female, F for female over here, and the department name. Department name. Let's say she belongs to the department production. Again, it's a varchar column because all of them are varchar columns. We can just put in all the values within quotes. So this is the way we have created our insert into statement. Now let's just execute this and see if this works. Okay, so when we execute this statement, the message that we'll uh, see over here is one row affected. Okay, so it has performed an operation that was a one row operation, but we cannot see how to how to verify that the row has actually been inserted. Again, let's go back to the select statement that we learned. So select from your table name, which is your DBO or employee. and then let's add the where clause where so select star let's select everything okay where uh, okay so we have inserted by the first name rene so let's search by that where first name so the column name equal to again within quotes because this is a varchar column the first name is rene 
semicolon. Now, when you're writing the actual code, please remember to put in a semicolon after every statement because that denotes that the statement has ended. Okay. So what you can see over here is that there are two records because we just ran a search on the first name. We got two output records. Uh, the one is the one that we inserted, Rene Thomas, and then there was an already existing record by Vanny Lewis. So what if there are multiple records and you want to be sure, then you can also have multiple conditions or multiple filters in your where clause. So you can use AND, okay, let's say last name equal to Thomas. Now, if we run this statement, we'll be able to get the record that we inserted. So, this is how you can verify that what you inserted was correct. Now, in this case, this insert statement, we have inserted the data and this data in all the columns that we have inserted. Now, let's again go back to the table and take a look at the column structures. So, we can see that the first column is a, all the columns of adjacent. The first column is a not nullable column. All the other columns are nullable columns. So, what this means is that there should always be a value in the first name column because it's not nullable. So, it will not be able to accept a null value. Whereas the other columns, you can have null values in those columns. So null values is basically a missing value. So what this implies is, let's try another insert statement. So let's copy this and try to create another statement. So let's say we have a new employee who has joined in and now he has not been assigned to a department. His email address is yet to be created and we do not yet have the information of phone number and gender for that employee. So we just have the first name of the employee and then we'll be updating the information later on. So in that case, what we can do is and how we can modify the insert statement is again, same syntax insert into dbo.employee which is the table name now since we have only the information for one column which is the first name column i'm going to remove all the other columns from here so now i'm going to insert a value only in one column and that value would be let's say there's a new employee by the name of matthew okay and i do not have any other information so i cannot insert it i'm going to leave all the values as null now let's run this statement again, end it with a semicolon, run this statement and see if it executes. So again, one row affected. So it has executed and we can again check it by creating a select statement. So select start from dbo dot uh, employee where first name equal to Matthew. Okay. And let's run this query. Okay. So now we can see that we've inserted a record and the first name has been inserted. The other details are still missing. Now this is okay because all the other columns that we had were nullable columns. But what if, let's take another example of the insert statement. What if we created a statement like this? So we have this insert statement over here. And let's say we just have the last name of that employee. So we yet do not, we do not yet have the first name of the employee. We're not sure of the first name. So we're going to, we're trying to insert a record in this table with just the last name value. So last name, let's say we are going to insert a value like Hopkins. Okay. And let's try to do this. So if you execute this statement, you're going to get an error message which says that cannot insert the value null into column first name table demo db dot dbo dot employee column does not allow nulls insert fails so the statement has been terminated so you have to remember that if it's a nullable if it's a non nullable column in your table you should always be able to provide a value for that column so only in that case it would work otherwise it will not work 
Now the last statement that we are going to see is the, uh, not the last statement, the second last statement that we are going to see is the update statement. Now we inserted a value which we saw for the employee Matthew. So let's run this statement again. And we have just inserted the first name. Now let's say that uh, we have now procured uh, the other details for the employee and we want to update the details of this employee in the table. So what we can do is use the update statement. So update then table dbo dot employee okay so this is your syntax update the table okay okay so this is your syntax update the table update dbo dot employee so update and the table name and then what you need to do is use the command set that is your keyword set and now i want to set the value for the last name so set last name equal to let's say hopkins in this case hopkins and i also want to set the value of another column which is the email address so put a comma then the next column name for which you want to set the value email address is equal to Matthew, let's say, dot Hopkins at AdventureWorks dot com. Okay. Now we want to update the value of only that record for which the first name is Matthew. If we do not add a where clause here now in this case if we just run this query what this would do is this would update all the records in your employee table and set the last name for all the records to hopkins and all the email addresses to matthew.hopkins at adventureworks.com but we have to be careful again in this case because we want to update only a particular record. So we have to identify that record and that record can be identified again by using the where clause where first name equal to Matthew. Okay. So just select this and run this query. Again, you will get the result as one row affected. Let's check. If the details have been updated so let's execute this query yes so the details have been updated so last name here is Hopkins email address is this and so on okay so this is how you can use your update statement now the last statement is your delete statement delete statement is basically simply used to delete any particular data record in your table so if you write delete from and your table name dbo or employee and just run this what will happen all the data from the table would be deleted but let's say we would really want to do that we probably just want to remove some employee records so some employee who does not exist any longer with the organization so we just want to remove his record so we have to again identify use aware clause and identify let's say the first name equal to Matthew. So we have to make sure that we identify unique record. So if there were let's say multiple records with the first name is Matthew then we should have included the last name and so on. So whatever are the columns in our table which identify unique record we should provide values for all those columns in this where clause okay, to uniquely identify a record. So now if I run this query Again, we'll see one row affected and now let's go back to the select statement and let's try to select the record with the first name is Matthew and now there is no record because the record has been deleted. So these are your DML statements, simple DML statements which you'll be using all the time while trying to fetch the data from the table or manipulate the data from the table. So these are your DML statements and these are their syntaxes which you need to follow. Okay, so this was all for this uh, training session. Thank you for watching.